Hi, I'm Sally Glass and welcome to Art This Week. On this week's episode, we visit the modern and speak with the artist Terry Haggerty about his work in the latest Focus exhibition. Now for Art This Week. Hi, I'm here with Terry Haggerty at the Fort Worth Modern to discuss his solo exhibition, which is part of their Focus series. Thanks for joining us, Terry. You're welcome. Good to be here. So to start off, could you sort of let us know how you selected the paintings that were involved in the show? Um, I usually when I'm working on shows, I'm sort of working to make a body of work for, for an exhibition. So it's not like I'm sort of uh, selecting works from previously made works. I tend to try and build a show based on yeah, works that I yeah, want to show. Okay. So it's, uh, it becomes quite a focused uh, yeah, project to think of um, all the work somehow being together. And so, yeah, so you're really sort of making a show uh, for a specific space. Okay. And um, that's how I work for this show. Um, now your works have been described by critics in comparison with things like minimalism, illusionism, that sort yeah. of thing. Where do you see yourself as operating within the dialogue of post-war abstraction? Um, as a painter, I mean, I've always been interested in the, the history of this kind of work. Um, but also, I've, I was really interested in a lot of earlier work, sort of based in sort of still life, the idea of objects in, uh, yeah, in history, in a way. So a lot of this work is really coming out of this kind of dialogue with sort of the placement of objects in space. Okay. And then from this, it's kind of slowly, but yeah, it's kind of moved from the idea of still life to uh, the paintings almost being like an object. Um, so if you look at yeah, the painters that have kind of worked with in abstraction, like Frank Stella or, or you know, these kind of artists, um, Donald Judd, uh, these kind of people, um, of course, I would need to look at these people as a student, you know, growing up. So these were, you know, a great influence. But for me, it was it's important to find a, a way to make yeah a, a new kind of language with this with this sort of uh, language in a way. Okay. So um, so I've sort of uh, yeah I've worked with that, and I'm trying to find a sort of new space in a way. I mean, it's very narrow, the kind of area that I'm working in. It's, um, you know, if you're sort of working with lines, it's, you tend to be categorised with all the other artists that have made works with lines. So that includes people like Bridget Riley or Daniel Buran. Um, so for me, it's important to, to find something new within this dialogue. When you, when you begin on a work, with your process, mm. is it pencil paper based that you start or is it more computer based? Uh, sometimes it can be, I, I'll, if I'm travelling, I'll maybe work on small drawings, very simple ideas. Um, but then when it comes to working on the, on the paintings, it will be on the computer. And I'll probably have you know, a, a screen full of you know, 50, 100 images and I'll just slowly sort of work through them. And it's a slow process in a way, even though computers are quite quick. I, <laughs> I tend to sit on, I sit on ideas for a long while until I feel like they're ready to, uh, to kind of take further. So it's a sort of percolating sort of process. Um, and then from there, I'll maybe do some sort of you know, mock-ups to see how they look. Um, so yeah, it's, 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 it's quite a slow process. And can you describe a little bit with us about how you do sort of your layering of the painting? It's, uh, yeah, something like this is probably built up of 30, 35 layers of gesso varnish paint. Um, so to get it to this finish, it will involve yeah, lots of layers of gesso, sanded, uh, okay. sprayed, and then eventually yeah, the, the metallic will be sprayed, and then the varnish will be probably eight layers of varnish to get it up oh, to wow. this kind of level. So when you're working on a site-specific installation, about how long does well, the installation... Well, it's a lot quicker with this because you've got, the wall's already painted, so I don't have to deal with okay, uh, gotcha. sanding it down. But um, the, the wall joins, then you're only maybe four, you know, like three or four coats of paint. Okay. Um, so in this way, it's a little bit more immediate. <laughs> gotcha. Even though they're a lot larger, it's still, yeah, a lot, a lot quicker to make. The first one I did was 2001, I think. I did oh, okay. for a gallery exhibition in New York. Um, and at the time I was making work about 
um, sort of air vents um, and sort of air condition units. And the particular space I made the wall drawing in was, uh, was a, almost like a gigantic air conditioning unit. So I made the vents almost like you're sort of in, you know, either inside or looking out of these vents. So it seemed a natural you know, uh, progression from the, from the works at that time to, to try and do this. Um, and then from there, it just seemed, yeah, it seemed, uh, it seemed like a logical sort of step, really, to engage more with the space architecturally. And Two Minds, which is at AT&T Stadium, yep. the Cowboy Stadium, it's one of your largest works. Yep. Um, how did that collaboration with AT&T begin? Um, yeah, that was a, a long process of, yeah, like mm -hmm. contact with uh, the, the consultants, um, you know, sending ideas for the for the project so did they they approached you first about yeah okay. yeah I mean at first I didn't know what it was for but <laughs> right. yeah there was talk of a possible commission so um, and, and at the time I didn't know what it was for but the idea slowly came through that it was for the Cowboy Stadium uh, and at this point I kind of thought well that sounded quite strange the idea <laughs> to make an artwork in a stadium but then of course once you saw all the other artists that were involved and uh, the, 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 the ambition of the, of the Jones family to kind of make this happen, then it was, yeah, then it became a, an incredibly exciting project to be a part of. Uh, so there were site visits to visit, you know, the, the stadium. And so from that point, yeah, again, it, it's a slow, you know, so you, you're looking at the space and you're, before that I was working a lot on the computer without really knowing what the space was going to be like. Right. So. Uh, once I saw the space, then, 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 then you adjust again sort of to, to the space. Obviously, your, your, your wall drawings are very, very sought after and that sort of thing. But what do you personally enjoy creating the most? I like doing both. I okay. think it's really important uh, yeah, for me to uh, yeah, go from one thing to the other. So it's not um, the reason why I'm doing so many, well, it's not like I'm doing so many things, but um, <laughs> I'm making drawings, paintings, wall drawings. Um, but it, in some ways, it's good to work in yeah, different scales, different mediums, uh, and and the, to try different things out. I mean, with the line work, it, it does get very, um, you know, very, it's very a focused kind of work. So with this, and I kind of do the drawings, which allows me to think a little differently about yeah what I want to do. So it's not like this is my life. It's there. I feel like there are other things to be done with the work. Yeah. Well, excellent. The exhibition looks great so far. I'm sure it'll be amazing once it's fully installed. <laughs> um, thanks so much for talking with us. You're welcome. Pleasure. We want to thank Terry for speaking with us. For more information on him, go to terryhaggerty.net. For more information on the exhibition, go to themodern.org. That's it for Art This Week. Thanks for watching. I still got your polo